In my last couple of videos, I've been talking about this uh, 8mm Fisheye Pro lens. And, uh, you know, this is an amazing lens, you know, being a wide angle f1.8. And then also with the EM1 Mark II and Olympus Workspace software, it has the uh, fisheye correction as well. And those two things really uh, helped me to make the decision to go ahead and buy this lens. And in that video, I also stated, you know, if you're on the fence about this lens, you know, just go ahead and get it. You won't regret it. And I still stand by that statement, but I should have clarified because I made a big assumption there that you are going to be using this lens professionally because this is not a cheap lens. I mean, this is eight, nine hundred bucks all day long. It's, it's, it's an expensive lens. And I, I made that assumption while I was making the video because I talked about my architectural and real estate photography and, and why I bought this lens uh, for my professional work. But if you're an amateur or enthusiast and you know, you don't want to spend or, you know, you don't want to spend eight or nine hundred dollars, uh, and you're not going to use this lens professionally, there's some great alternatives out there. And, uh, you know, I think like the Laowa has a, a 7.5 millimeter rectilinear lens at f2, which was on my short list. Uh, and there's also, I saw one, it was a 7.5 millimeter fisheye lens uh, for about $200, and it was an f2.8. And that was also on my short list for some astrophotography, but I never considered them for my professional work because of that fisheye correction built into the camera, which, which will help me to uh, compose the shots in the field while I'm there on site. For, for most of us, you know, we don't need that, right? We just want a good alternative. I'm going to share with you one that I bought before I bought this one, and that's this Pixco uh, 8mm fisheye lens. And I did a video on this lens before, uh, not specifically about this lens. Uh, I was doing it mostly about, you know, getting a wide angle, comparing it to the 9mm body cap lens. And I think I compared it to uh, the 12mm f2 lens that I also got for, for vlogging purposes. And I never considered this lens for any of my professional work. And it, it's really not going to be very good in astrophotography either because it starts, really it starts at f4, right? And that's still a bit too slow for astrophotography. Unless you're going to do star trails and things like that, then you'll be okay. Star trails and things like that, this lens is fine because you're leaving the lens open forever anyway. But the main selling point of this lens is that it's, it's very sharp in the center and it's only $70. I've seen it for even less than that on Amazon right now. And I did some test shots, you know, directly against the Fisheye Pro because I can. And I just went out to my front yard and took a picture of my house. Then I compared it to a lot of other pictures I took with this lens. I've taken hundreds of pictures with this lens and the results are pretty consistent. You know, the center virtually the same from wide open up to about F8. Both these lenses in the center are very, very sharp. Uh, it's only when you start to get out into the corners, maybe about this far out, that this lens starts to get a little bit soft, you know, this, this uh, Pixco lens, whereas the Fisheye Pro stays sharp, you know, across the frame from f1.8 all the way to f8. Once you start to get to about f11, or definitely by f16, the image is a little bit soft uh, due to diffraction, and not just a little bit, it's a lot soft actually. Uh, the other thing I noticed was, you know, between f4 and f8 on this lens, uh, other than the depth of field, which is very wide anyway, there's not much difference in terms of the uh, purple fringing and things like that. It didn't really help stopping down on this lens, uh, if, if any. So you're not going to get better image quality by stopping down on this lens. Uh, and, and stopping down to f5.6 or f8 did not make the corners any sharper, to be honest, un unless there was some depth of field issue. Uh, but in terms of absolute sharpness, I could not really tell any difference stopping down on this lens. Uh, the other main difference between these two lenses in terms of the image is this lens produced much warmer images than this lens. Uh, and by warmer, I mean just the white balance was warmer, not that they were warmer or warm and fuzzy or better. They were just a little bit warmer in terms of white balance. So you'll have to adjust for that in post-processing and shoot raw. 
Now, if you shoot JPEG, you may have a hard time adjusting the color back because it is significantly warmer, as, as you can see. Now, in terms of build quality, uh, it is an all-metal build uh, lens. Even the lens hood is metal, which I was a little bit surprised by. Uh, you know, there's some plastic bits here and there, but the build quality is not bad. I mean, it's a pretty solid lens. Uh, now, the focusing action and the uh, f-stop ring, the aperture ring here, the aperture ring is very well dampened uh, still to this day, but after about a year and a half, two years, the dampening on the uh, focus ring is a little bit light. It, it, it turns very, very smoothly now. Um, <clears throat> so it's loosened up quite a bit. Not a big deal. It'll still stay where you left it, but it's very, very easy to bump it, okay? And, and it'll be out of focus. The other thing is, the focusing action is a little bit off too. It's not perfectly linear from, you know, left to right, right to left. Meaning, if I go past the focus point just a little bit with this uh, lens, and I want to go back, sometimes I have to go back a little bit more than I did to get to the focus point. So that, that action's a little bit sloppy. But again, I think, uh, you know, on a tripod and you got time to focus, you'll, you'll get it. You know, you'll get, you'll get what you want in focus. And if you're just walking around with this lens, all you got to do is put it right at here at about the number five on the focus dial here. I don't know if that's five feet or five meters or if it's just the number five. It, it doesn't seem to correlate with anything in real life. But if you put it to about five on here and then put the aperture at f5.6, Pretty much everything will be in focus uh, from from about you know this far to all the way out to infinity, um, and and that's and that's because of, because of the super wide angle and the very wide depth of field. So I think at this price point of seventy dollars, you got nothing to complain about, and I, I have no problem recommending this lens if you just want to go out and have some fun with a wide angle lens.